This video looks at lead lag compensation. Now the first 12 videos have looked at the definition and computation of margins and the impact of changing compensation gain on the margins and we've also looked at some mechanistic designs for lead and lag compensators where they're taken on their own and these mechanistic designs were based on the attributes or properties of lead and lag compensators and design criteria such as desired phase margin and desired bandwidth. But there were weaknesses in these two compensators as you will note if you look at those videos. This video is now going to look at lead lag compensators. Now we recommend before you go further make sure you've looked at the Bode diagram video on lead lag compensation. And remember that the main purpose of this video is to develop insight and understanding, not necessarily to propose a formal design technique, although we will give indications of how you can do design. So some background then on lead and lag compensators. So first of all, lead compensators allow an increase in bandwidth. That's the main reason for using them, increase in bandwidth and speed of response compared to a simple gain. But of course the downside is that you'll get an increase in impact activity, fatigue damage, possibly poor robustness and so on. So what's the conclusion of this? You should only use a lead if you really need to, which is where you need a relatively large bandwidth. What about lag compensators? Well, the main attribute of lag compensators was the ability to increase low frequency gain. But they also had a downside, which was the introduction of a very slow pole into the closed loop and some negative phase. And so what do we get from this? You should only include a lag, again, if you really need to. That is, if you really do need to increase the low frequency gain. So what about lead lag compensators then? There will be times where the user requires both, that's the key word, both an increase in bandwidth and an increase in the low frequency gain. And you'll notice the bandwidth is associated to a lead component and the gain to a lag component. So in such cases, you'll need to include a lead and lag compensator components. So what we're going to do now is look at a systematic approach to the analysis of lead lag compensation. And from that, we'll propose what we call a mechanistic design approach, which is a bit like the rules we gave you for the lead and lag alone. You are reminded that more formal design methods do exist. OK, now for convenience, this video is going to assume that the gain crossover frequency and the closed loop bandwidth are equivalent. Of course, they're not exactly equivalent. There will be a small difference. But for design purposes, the difference is small enough that we can treat one as the other. So a lead component of a lead lag. So a lead offers positive phase rotation, and this can be used to achieve a desired phase margin at a desired gain crossover frequency. And that, of course, was covered in videos 11 and 12. It's logical to consider a lead component as the first part of a lead lag design because the first thing we need to do is say what is the achievable bandwidth. If you've set yourself a bandwidth requirement, you need to then check, can I deliver this? Does there exist a lead which will enable me to get the bandwidth that I want? Now, if you're using a lead lag, it's because a bandwidth requirement has been included and this can only be tackled with a lead component. And so what we're going to argue is that you should do the lead first and because you're doing the lead first, you can actually use the same design procedure that we used in videos 11 and 12. And that's nice because it means there's nothing new to learn. So if you're doing a lead lag, then the lead design is identical to the lead design when the lead was on its own. What about the lag component? Well, a lag offers the potential to regain some low frequency gain. And you'll see we've put some big word in red here, assuming that the required phase margin and bandwidth have already been achieved. And again, if you look back at the lag compensator designs we talked about earlier, you'll see you began from, I already have my phase margin, and all I want to do is regain some low frequency gain. 
So consequently, a lag design will logically sit as a second step once the lead component is complete and with the aim of regaining a specified amount of low frequency gain. Now the lag places the corner frequencies a decade below the gain crossover frequency and therefore it should have only a very small impact on what the lead's already given you, which is the bandwidth and the phase margin. So using this argument, you can see that we can also adopt the mechanistic lag design procedure given in videos 9 and 10. And there's only one small change. That is, the initial step is the lead design as opposed to a simple gain design. So hopefully you've now seen that in order to do lead lag design, we don't need to know anything more really than we needed for a lead design or a lag design on their own. We're simply putting the same two methods together. So here's the proposed mechanistic rules for lead lag design. Number one, choose the desired gain crossover frequency and you'll see that's exactly the same as the first step of a lead design. Find the rotation A required so that you can solve this equation and you'll remember that was also the same step in the lead design and obviously check that the rotation you need is less than 55 otherwise you cannot deliver it. Use a lookup table to find the value of beta for a lead with a maximum rotation A and there's the table and you'll see it's the same table we had in the lead design. And then choose the gain of the lead so that the omega you had up here becomes the gain crossover frequency of the compensated system. And you remember in order to do that, the lead is given with this particular formula here, this structure. So you'll see we have the gain crossover frequency in here, the beta in here, and we've got the beta in fact in three places, but the key thing is the gain has got this modulus of g of j omega in it. So if you choose this compensator, then it will do everything that you've asked. It will give you the phase margin you've asked for up here, and it will give you the gain crossover frequency that you asked for here. What next? So remember, we're doing lead lag design. Well, next you need to choose the required gain recovery at low frequency. So we're going to assume that that's alpha. You need to recover alpha in terms of low frequency gain. And in order to do that, you need this lag component here. K lag equals S plus omega 10, omega over 10, sorry, over S plus omega over 10 alpha. And you'll see the only difference between this lag and the lag in the earlier videos is it doesn't have a constant in it because the constant effectively is absorbed into the lead design. So there's your mechanistic rules and you'll see they look very, very similar to the rules we had earlier on. So we're going to do an example so you can see how this works. So we've got G equals K of S plus 1 cubed. We want to design a lead lag compensator to give a bandwidth around 1.3 radians per second, a 60 degree phase margin and a low frequency gain greater than 10. So the first thing we've done is we've marked the minus 120 degree line. And the reason we've done that is, of course, that's the line you use to calculate your 60 degree phase margin. So we're looking at this intercept point here if you were doing a simple gain design. But we're not doing a simple gain design. We actually want to increase the bandwidth. You'll see we actually want a bandwidth of 1.3 radius per second. So next thing to do is mark the target bandwidth. So what we're saying is that this value here is 1.3. Now, at that particular point, so I'll wrap out that line because it's in a way, you will see that the argument of the system is minus 157 degrees. And therefore, the uplift we need from the lead is 37 degrees. That's marked by the arrow there. So we need to lift the phase diagram by 37 degrees in order to give ourselves minus 120 at the desired um, gain crossover frequency. So what do we do then? We summarize this up here. We've said we want a phase rotation of 37 and that means from our table that we need a beta of 4 and of course we also had, I'll rewrite it up here, omega equals 1.3. So if we put those values into the formula you'll see the beta is here and in fact beta is in four places, the 1.3 is here and the other part of the formula is this g, uh, the modulus of g computed at this frequency. If I put that compensator in here 
are the compensated plots. The green ones are g times this lead component. And what do you notice? Again, I've marked the 120 degree line because that indicates where we would have a 60 degree phase margin. I've indicated the gain crossover frequency, and what do you see? We have indeed got the gain crossover frequency that we wanted at 1.3. And you'll see we have also got the phase margin that we wanted, because you'll see here this is 60 degrees. So this lead has given us the phase margin we want and the gain crossover frequency that we want. So that's the first bit complete. Now, what about the lag component? We wanted to use this to achieve the required low frequency gain. Now, the current compensated system with just G and the lead is given here. So it looks a bit of a mess, but don't worry about that. OK, and what I want to do is find out what's the current low frequency gain. So if I do the limit as S goes to zero of GK lead, plug in the numbers, and I'll let you do that by yourself, you see you end up with 2.21. Now, in our specification, we said we wanted a low frequency gain of 10. And therefore, we need gain recovery of roughly a factor of 5. You can see it's not exactly 5, but you'll know by now that my view is there's no point messing with decimal places. You might as well use integers, because in practice, it will make very little difference. So I'm going to use 5. Now, the gain crossover frequency is 1.3, and therefore, Given our lag component had this form, S plus omega over 10, S plus omega over 10 alpha, plugging in these numbers, you see we get S plus 0.13, that's the omega over 10, and S plus 0.13 over 5, that's because alpha was 5. And therefore, this is your lag compensator. We plug that in, and here is the new graph. You see the green marks the bow diagrams with your lead lag compensator. So what do we notice? First of all, the gain crossover frequency is still around 1.3, which is what we wanted. The phase margin is still very close to 60 degrees. Now you'll notice it's just below 60 degrees, and that doesn't surprise you because you remember that when you add a lag component and you put the corner frequencies a decade below the gain crossover frequency, you usually lose 5 to 10 degrees off your phase margin. And that's what you're noticing down here. We're not quite 60 degrees. We've lost 5 to 10 degrees. OK. And finally, the low gain frequency is close to 10. 20 decibels, of course, corresponds to a, a low frequency gain of 10. So students are reminded that the design we've done here are illustrative and approximate. I haven't made any pretense that the specifications have been met precisely with, you know, three or four decimal places. And I believe that that is, in fact, sensible, because in practices, small differences in your compensator would not be significant in terms of real behavior. You can always carry out fine tuning if you really want to, and you can always begin with a phase margin of around 65 degrees if you want to allow for the 5 to 10 degrees lost when you introduce the lag component. Example 2 then. So here we've got g equals 1 over s, s plus 0.1, s plus 0.4. And we want a lead lag compensator to give a bandwidth of 0.1 radians per second, 60 degree phase margin, and an error at constant to unit ramps smaller than 4. OK. So once again, you'll see we've marked the minus 120 degree line. And if you look at this intercept here, you'll see it corresponds roughly to 0.04. So if you did a simple gain design, in order to get a 60 degree phase margin, the best bandwidth you could get would be about 0.04 radians per second. But we've actually asked for 0.1 radians per second. And so therefore, we need a lead because we want to increase the bandwidth or the gain crossover frequency. So here's our target frequency, 0.1. And at that frequency, you'll see that the um, phase of G is minus 149 degrees, and therefore the uplift required to get to minus 120 oops, sorry, is 29 degrees. So what we're saying is this distance in here is 29 degrees. So the two values you need from this figure are you need the omega equals 0 0.1, and you need the uplift, which is 29 degrees. So there we go. 
put those values down. There's the 29. Now 29 implies beta equals 3. We had omega equals 0 0.1. So we put those into our mechanistic lead design. And there it is. And that's what you get. Root 3 over modulus of g of j 0.1, s plus 0.1 over root 3, s plus 0.1 times root 3. So let's plug that in and see what happens in terms of our bow diagrams. Well, again, we've marked the 120 degree line for convenience. And you'll see the gain crossover frequency, as desired, is indeed at omega equals 0.1. If you calculate the phase margin, which I'm going to calculate here, you'll see the phase margin is indeed 60 degrees as requested. And therefore, our lead design has given us the phase margin and the gain crossover frequency that we requested. What next then? Design the lag component to achieve the required low frequency gain. So the current compensated system is this one here. And you'll see I've not simplified the numbers in the lead component, I've just left them. But the key thing to note here is the system includes an integrator. And therefore, the limit as s goes to zero of g k lead is in fact infinite. OK, and just for completeness, because we'll need it later, I've noted that the modulus of g of j 0.1 is 171.5. But the key thing is there will be no offset to steps because the system includes an integrator. But you'll remember that we actually set a design specification based on the offset to ramps. So the offset to unit ramps is given by this formula. We do the steady state is the limit as s goes to zero of 1 over s g k lead. And if you plug the numbers in, and I've summarized the key numbers there, what do you get? You get 11.9. And you remember the target we set was actually 4. We wanted this number to be less than 4. And therefore, I have to do 11.9 divided by 3 in order to get that number down to 4. And again, you'll notice I've just divided by an integer rather than being over precise. So what we're saying is we need to increase the steady state gain by a factor of 3 in order to meet our ramp error requirement. So there we go. Increase low frequency gain by a factor of 3. We know the current gain crossover frequency is 0 0.1, and therefore the required lag component has to be s plus 0 0.01. You'll see that's 0 0.1 over 10. And then s plus 0 0.0033, and that's 0 0.01 divided by 3. If we plug that in, here's the bow diagrams you end up with. Again, we've marked the 120 degree line, and you'll see the phase margin is calculated here. And you'll see it's close to 60. Again, it's not exactly 60 because you've got that small loss because you've added the lag component. If you look at the gain crossover frequency, what you see, it's close to 0.1 radians per second. OK, so the key thing is the lead lag compensator has given us the required phase margin, the required gain crossover frequency. What about the required low frequency gain? Well, we think it has, because our analysis said it should, but we've done a plot just to confirm it. So here's the ramp error response. And what do you notice? We've pulled the asymptotic ramp error down to 4, which was our requirement. So interaction between lead and lag components. We've assumed that the user specifies the bandwidth or equivalently, we've used the gain crossover frequency because it's much easier with the Bode diagrams. And you've also specified low frequency gain characteristics. It is possible that these two could be inconsistent. That is, you cannot achieve both with a single lead lag compensator. In general, it's probably necessary to do some analysis to determine the limits of what can be achieved. And we'll look at this in some later videos. So, in summary, this video has introduced the lead lag compensator and given some mechanistic approaches to design which will allow the user to meet requirements where the requirements are specified in terms of a gain crossover frequency, or you could replace bandwidth there, a given phase margin as a target, and a low frequency gain as a target. In practice, you might need to do some fine tuning and one reason why that's the case is because in practice the phase margin requirement is somewhat arbitrary. The 60 degrees is really based on second order models and you may not have a second order model. 
Worked examples demonstrate the efficacy and ease of application of this method. And more advanced approaches do exist, and we may look at those in later videos.